Hello guys, uh, welcome back. In this video I'm going to show you image to 3D. Uh, the main goal I want to show you here is how you can work with uh, colors and material as a way of not just coloring an object but also as a way of modeling. And I'm going to use a combination of colors, materials, polygon selection and boolean tools. So let's get started. So I found this object over here, this image. It's a relatively simple drawing with a transparent background, so it's quite easy to make it work. This doesn't look as good. I'm increasing the resolution all the way. Now what resolution is doing, this is increasing the amount of cube, uh, the size of the cubes, basically, or rectangles, what this is showing. I'll explain this later, show you how it looks like. And this will make a, the more you increase it will be, the more dense the mesh will be. This will be a very dense mesh. But we need to see that because otherwise it's not clear however i'll use later the simplify tool to reduce the mesh density and still keep it nice so we'll show you that in a moment the tolerance is where you can kind of remove how much you want to remove details from the object and so on in this case i want to have the entire mesh this is the amount of 15. this is what the thickness would be like the the deep the depth of these in engravings, these type of stuff. And I can use it flipped background or without flipped background. Without flipped background, this will be coming out. And with flipped background, this would be going in. Now again, all of these settings are image by image, depending what type of image it is. And there's no such thing that you can reuse the same setting, always the same. The s same things with simplify, some uh, images will benefit from simplify and some will just destroy the object which would be the case on this object you have an option also to add a backside image and if you add a backside you can make them oops, I didn't click on it you can make them um, symmetrical or not um, i don't want over here a backside so i'm keeping it like this the reason i'm flipping um, the background here i actually i'm going to redo this image from scratch uh, you see i'm going to work on it the main difference here is that um, this over here is flat so it has a cut in over here, which I may need to deal with it later, we'll see if I deal with it. Um, but if I don't flip the background, this will give me th these edges over here that I don't like. So um, so it will be easier for me to work in this case with the flip uh, background. Okay, then all, all looks good. This has some artifact over here, which I'm not sure its purpose or not. I'm going to leave this. I'm not going to worry for it now. So let's finalize this. Uh, once we finalize this, you can see we get a mesh with 96,000 plus uh, polygons, which is quite dense. So let's look at it, why it's so dense. The way this is created, you can see if I zoom in, this has tiny, tiny uh, rectangles. This is how it's created. And the resolution makes this. This is what makes this object like pixelated. This is the nature of this type of object. It's similar to what you get with magic fix or sculpting. Uh, they all use... Um, a kind of approximation which is a set of small tiny tiny faces and in this case it's it's uh, rectangles um, or quads and based on that they make it so the entire mesh has to be covered with this type of stuff and this is how it is being able to define everything using just rectangles so it's not really like a drawing that it's very smooth that's why you get this and we need these details in order to define the entire details so in the, my previous videos, I've shown a lot how to use resolution. In these type of meshes, it's not a good idea to use resolution. I've even found them sometimes to create non-manifold because the face are so small, it can potentially remove some details that it's not needed. Um, so it's not a good idea, uh, at least not in the beginning. After Simplify, you may use it. Um, so I'm going to use Simplify over here. So let's take a look. We have 96 plus thousand faces. I'm simplifying it to max five. Now. Five is the max, but you can do it twice. However, I almost never it's a good idea to use it more. I'll show you. So if, once I finalize this, look what we got over here. From 96, we got it down to 19,000. And you can barely see the difference how this uh, disrupted the mesh. Um, if I would use this simplify again, five, it will completely destroy the object. Um, it may still look good at one. So it reduced it from 19 to 15. Um, yeah, that can work, but I, I don't like it. I, I think it's best, 19 is good enough to use it. I also want to show you how the mesh structure looks like now. You see it reduced, it made a new mesh structure, and you see it over here, well defined. This is something that we call uniform resolution, which is kind of, um, it's not quads, 
but it makes sure that all of the sizes are almost equally. It's, it's a very advanced triangulation that is used a lot whenever you need uniformity. It's, it's good for sculpting and other stuff. A uh, silicate so resolution tool has an advanced setting that actually can do uniform resolution as well. Um, you can actually now do resolution to reduce it more from 19 and let's say we can reduce it like this and over here we'll make it flat and we'll reduce to 17 but I like better this uniform resolution structure here and I think it's safer to stay with this one and this type of uh, complex objects so okay so now we're here we have the basic shape the problem here is let's say we want to start coloring over here the problem here is that these things when you bend all of these faces the way this is created they're not really flat and it's difficult to color so I'll start picking objects over here so first let's try without, I have my tolerance on. If I don't have a tolerance on, the way you touch application in the beginning, if you go to faces, this obviously is like tiny faces, it's, it's, it's not usable. If you go to polygons, these are not really well-defined polygons because they're not really straight all over the cuts. So we can go to um, increase the tolerance and start cutting a little bit nicer details. Um, and this will work for most parts but it will be difficult to select parts like these because this is like just too complex uh, to select them and parts like these, the insides, th these are just too difficult to select. If you increase the tolerance too much, you'll select everything. If you pick it in the middle, you may be able to get it, but it will be very difficult to select the entire object uniformly the same amount of faces. Uh, maybe deep selection will give you better results. I'm actually not sure. Uh, let's take a look over here. No, actually not. It wouldn't help you. So this will be very difficult to select. So to solve this, what we're going to do here is we're going to introduce a new object that we're going to use to clean up this mesh. And what I'm going to how to do that, I'm first going to select this back polygon and I'm going to copy it, simply copy it. And I'm going to create a new color for this. You use just any color. And you see now both colors because they overlap. They occupy the same thing. This is called in 3D, we call them flickering where it's a result when two faces occupy the same space and you know they both have different colors so this is now we have a plane if i copy the face i just have a plane this is not usable now um, it's usable different tools uh, you can use to work with it to cut using different tools but not boolean operation stitch and scoop we're going to use because you need to have um, a mesh that is watertight that has some thickness so anyway, it's going to need thickness later, but for now, at least I need for this. I'm going to add thickness and any thickness will be good because I'm going to scale it. So now I have this is a mesh and this is a mesh. Okay. So now I need to explain something. Um, the main goal here is uh, we change the color of this object for two reasons. One, that we're going to use it to visualize so we can see what we're going to do where the object uh, intersects. And the second thing is that um, colors will be using a different material. What's happening here is that Selfkit has you can use materials and if you choose different colors we'll do different materials let me explain that if you have one object that has one color and you keep on changing the color it's just you're just changing the color the same material not a problem but if you have one object that has multiple colors then each color will create a new material and then we're going to be able to work with the material selection because we have multiple materials so this is basically what we are after so what we're going to do here is we're going to scale and first use the visual so I'm going to scale in this, grabbing this blue one over here, representing the z-axis, and simply move it in until we can see something like this. So we see it covered the entire mesh. What happens now is that this plane, this, this color, intersects in the middle of a thickness. You remember we used a thickness of 15? And this is kind of positioned in the middle. Let's say 7.5. I don't know. It doesn't really matter because we can change the size later. The main thing we want here is that this will <clears throat> isolate the the extruded parts from the other parts. That's what we want. And we also want this to use, we can use later material selection. We want to make sure that the color we see over here only covers these parts, not the other parts. So for that, we're going to scale it in a little bit. We need to scale it just a little bit, make sure that, the, that we can see the blue parts over here. Let me first scale this in this side so it's easier to see so now we see this is blue and now we can start scaling in this side you see I still have here a little bit on this side it's not a big deal it's just showing this if you want to leave it these things we can leave it but if we want to remove it we can scale it more for now I'm mainly concerned about this 
to make sure to move it in without um, removing details. So I need to move it up a little bit. Um, so basically what I'm doing is I'm making shorter this new object so that the image object is basically a little bit bigger so it will not do it. So I left over over here all of these places um, things and depends what we're going to do later with it. This, this may make a difference. For now I don't really care. I'll leave this over here, this type of stuff. Okay. So now, as I said, once we have two colors, this is first a visual, we can see what's going on. But the main thing is that when you're going to combine these two objects, they're going to create an object that has two colors and thereby two materials, which will be the main goal here to help us make it work. Now we're going to use Stitch and Scoop, which is a Boolean operation. This is one of the only examples that I found where every single option of Stitch and Scoop can work. And doesn't matter which one you use. Let me show you. If you use the intersection part, this will actually give you an interesting effect. It flips the color. You see, the one that we showed in this color, the new color, is now going to be blue, the wireframe, and the other one shows in this color. And this is the nature of how this works. I'm not going to explain it now because to explain it better, I'll need different examples to show how this works. But this works perfectly as expected. This is how this tool is supposed to work. Um, but yeah, I'll need other examples to better explain it, so I'll leave it for now just to show you that it works. To remove the details, we can actually do both. If I remove this new object, it I get this, okay? If I remove the blue object, um, I think I'll get kind of like a wireframe. So it will remove this, yes, and you get something like this. And you can see already that here we have this color, in the back we have the blue color, also on the side, because this is how it takes uh, what it took from each object and represents and it saves these colors. So I'm not gonna save that. Or I can do a union, just combine them, and basically you get something like this. Okay, so I can use any of this. This is a, a rare example. So I'm just gonna finalize this one. Doesn't really matter which one. Okay, so here's where the magic starts. So first off, that the polygon selection will already work better even without tolerance. Before we had a tolerance, without tolerance it wouldn't work. Um, now it will work a little bit better. Uh, let's see, with one, um, actually strange. I think when I use the Last time I tested this before making the video, I used the other Boolean operation, and in that case, it actually solved this because now what I got, I got this flat. Um, this is actually the big, I think here to look. You see, these are now flat, they are a single polygon. Um, I can work without it, just to show you, because I can use the material selection and select only this material or only this material but I want to actually be able to work on this, so I was wrong saying that any boolean will solve the problem, and that's not the case. So I'm going to use the other boolean, I think this one what I used last time, that will maintain the thickness. So basically what I did is the union removed the thickness, and this maintained the thickness that, that it's working. So this is actually good, I was wrong. Okay, so now if you see if I go to polygon selection, I can select nicely polygons, and let's try even without a tolerance, and even without a tolerance. This cut made it so that it's really easy to select different parts. And now, let's before we do anything, let's take a look over here in the material. You can see we already have two materials, material 0 and material 1. So now I'm going to start coloring parts over here, and I'm going to use just random colors because I'm, I'm really not an expert in colors, so I'm not going to focus on this now. I'm just going to show you the concept here without focusing on which colors it's used, just random colors. So you can see over here, um, yeah, this should be like probably like clouds and white, whatever, but it doesn't matter. Actually, let me change it. Just again, I'm not going to focus on colors because I'm, I'm not an expert, but let's just for now uh, keep it like this. Okay, so we already see here that I got f uh, three diff four different colors because zero counts as one uh, as well. So you have four different colors over here. and you can start continue picking different colors, but most importantly is that, first of all, it's easy now to select these parts as well. You can see even without any tolerance, I didn't check any tolerance uh, on the polygon, it's very easy to select. But also, if I color all of the bigger pieces, then I can simply select each of the material and inverse select. So I can go back to material selection. I'm going to select the white material, the blue material, and I'm going to select the brown material, okay. Um, I haven't selected yet everything, but just to show you, and this material, now this covers this. So I think I need to color first these ones. Uh, go to polygon, let's select these 
pick parts over here just to be able to show you. So I'm selecting these parts. Look how easy it is to select. And, and I, I do not have the polygon selection on. And this should be actually different colors, but let's just give something random here. Okay. And now let's select, for example, these. And yeah, let me give some different color for this. And yeah, it's not a nice color, but it will do it for now. And let's say something like this, just to choose something. Okay, so now I have all of these colors. I go to material and I can select this color, this material, this material, and this material, and this material. You can see I have all of these materials selected and this material. And now let's see, is this selected? This is, okay, this I want to deselect. So I have, okay, this material selected. And now I can simply go inverse select. So it got me selected the things that it's difficult to select, that it's no longer selected. And now I can give it a different color. Okay, so we get something like this. So it's kind of, it, it was actually solved already as you have seen because it's it simplified it so much, this cut. But just to show you that using even inverse select, it's even easier to do something like this. And yeah, I may have done it wrong with the colors, but you get the point. And obviously I need to change uh, these colors as well here. So if I go, let's see over here, you see we have six materials. If I go now to um, selecting these ones, these polygons over here, and I change them to a different color, Let's try to find anything I haven't used yet. I'm not sure. That's uh, not good. Okay, something like this. You see now we got a um, we got a total of seven polygons, and I just want to show you that it, this will actually work the opposite. I mean, seven materials. This will work in the other way around. Also, if you merge materials, um, it will reduce. So let's say suppose that I'm going to select this one and these colors and I'm going to combine them into a single color so let's say I make them both um, whatever something like this uh, now you can see we got back six materials so we're gonna merge these together um, now we get five materials so basically that's how these materials work and this is uh, very helpful okay I hope uh, this video was helpful and let me know if you want me to show anything else. Okay, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye.